trying to start. Hi, everyone. We'll succeed to start now. Yes, we would like you to be a bit silent, maybe 20, 30, 50 minutes. Yeah, we can close the door. So thanks for attending the, the session. Uh, this is for the C Hubs uh, support that we are trying to do to do and to make it for the smaller communities. And uh, I'm Tony Ristovsky, uh, program officer in the C Hub. Uh, my name is Barbara Klen. I'm a regional C Hub coordinator, and um, yeah, this is our session about concrete support. So we can start. Uh, yeah, we can start maybe with asking who, uh, who okay, uh, we we see a lot of uh, familiar faces, but also uh, some faces that we are not recognized. So maybe some of you uh, uh, doesn't know even know uh, what is C Hub. So do you want to, to maybe to start explaining a little bit uh, what is the idea of C Hub? So okay, I see some some, some notes. Uh, C Hub uh, it, it was formed like uh, two three years ago. Uh, two uh, years ago, it started with uh, grants and uh, supporting from the Wikimedia Foundation uh, as a project. Uh, focused uh, on the uh, regional hub as uh, supporting Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, we are supporting more than 35 uh, communities uh, in, in this area uh, and uh, we are covering uh, all uh, three main uh, areas. Uh, but uh, and I always explaining a little bit uh, and uh, that's like the easiest way how to explain what is C Hub. And that is like we are kind of back office of the uh, these communities and uh, help desk in the in the same uh, time. So if uh, some uh, volunteers, individuals, organizations, uh, some unorganized or organized groups have some requests or some support, they need some support uh, from us. Uh, uh, we meet with them and uh, they uh, they transfer their request to us via email or uh, something uh, uh, on some other channels and then uh, we are trying to, to provide uh, that support to them. I think that the, okay, next slide. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Tony explained about the beginning a bit. Yeah, I think it's shown. Yeah, it's good. Um, so basically, what was first done was the research in the region about needs, assessment of needs. And upon that research, it was decided that C Hub would be covering three areas. We call it three pillars of the C Hub. First one is administrative support, second one is programmatic, and the third one is communication related support. So basically, under this administrative support, we are mostly covering supports related to projects, writing, grants applications, writing, and also it can be for Wikimedia uh, Foundation, rapid grants, or some other grants, general fund, or it can be for outside uh, donors or uh, uh, those who give grants to organizations. And second, programmatic support would mean um, everything related to campaigns, programs, it can also be learning sessions, um, also tools fall in this category. So basically whatever we discover in the region that it's needed, what needs like learning sessions, connecting sessions, falls in this category. And third category is uh, communications. Our C newsletter falls in this. Maybe some of you have seen this newsletter. Um, if you haven't, we can put you on our list. It's a, it's a really nice newsletter. Um, but it also in this, in this area we cover some catch-up sessions and these are uh, dedicated to topics that we identify as important for the region. So during the previous year and a half, some of these sessions were, relate, were covering uh, artificial intelligence, about CE youth, branding, well, so on and so forth. Uh, we also record these sessions, so if you cannot make it to some of them, uh, we always post it afterwards. Um, although we have this, these three areas that we cover, that was during the first year of our grant, now we are in the second year of C-Hub implementation. And 
to these three areas, we added another two. And one is called microgrants, and the other one con is concrete uh, support to smaller communities, capacity building. And during this session, we will focus on these two. So we will not talk about pillars. We are focusing only on these two. We will start with microgrants, and we want to show you like step by step how we um, well constructed this basically from scratch because the process didn't exist and well methodology nothing so tony will start yeah uh, so microgrants it's uh, some program that already exists by the affiliates in the c region uh, it was uh, done by serbia poland czech republic in some forms uh, and uh, other countries that are that had like a bigger, larger uh, uh, affiliates and uh, that can give microgrants to their communities. So that idea it was to bring it uh, on the regional level. So to have it like microgrants uh, to be accessible for individuals, organizations that can apply for rapid funds, but uh, you know that uh, rapid funds is doing on rounds. So maybe it's uh, so for some of them it's uh, large uh, documentation like uh, to process uh, for them, and uh, they uh, want to be to to get like uh, rapid, uh, to to get uh, those funds in a much faster uh, uh, like uh, time. So they uh, we decided to introduce a microgrants program on the uh, regional level, supported by the C hub for the C communities. Uh, and uh, we created uh, this program. We uh, published on Meta completely like uh, the application, the procedure. Uh, we went uh, through, uh, because it was completely new program, we formed uh, a, a working group uh, by the steering committee members. And during the Tbilisi C meeting last year, we had a workshop and uh, many of the participants during that uh, meeting gave us uh, a lot of viable uh, uh, like, uh, opinions, suggestions, comments, and we introduced some of them into um, our program. So the program has a total budget of 8,000 euros uh, dedicated for this year to be spent in, during 2024. And uh, we uh, decided to be open call, not to be on rounds. So it is an ongoing program that uh, uh, applicants can apply uh, or continuously during, uh, uh, during uh, the open call and uh, until we, we had uh, funds for that. So uh, this uh, uh, C uh, like uh, this program, uh, it like uh, as I mentioned on Meta, it is explained in pretty much similar way as Rapid Funds, uh, which uh, like includes like eligible costs, eligible activities, uh, some criteria how we we, we will uh, make evaluation of that. Uh, so it is well explained like uh, how uh, how you can apply and also in the same time we try to be easy to understand and easy to read and to, like to be in a small version of that of the rapid funds so the main question of who can apply is uh, it's uh, we received a lot of requests at the, the beginning when I opened, uh, when we opened the, the call, is that uh, from the Central Asia countries, if they can apply. We, uh, for this year, because this is a completely new and pilot project, we decided not to cover Central Asia countries. Although they are like, some of them, it's uh, like uh, regular uh, participants during the C meetings. And uh, uh, we decided not to include it this time, but uh, that can be changed for 2025. Uh, for uh, other like uh, participants who can apply, it's individuals, groups, unorganized or organized, uh, and uh, even uh, like uh, user groups and affiliates. If uh, we uh, evaluate their proposal to be worth uh, to be funded. Uh, what uh, what we can uh, fund uh, as a project uh, that that is uh, like uh, uh, various activities. Like uh, so far, we had like events uh, like uh, editathons, 
Uh, we had like community meet meetings like uh, for the first time in Slovenia, they started like a uh, community meetup for their uh, community, which is largely inactive as, an, as a Wikimedia uh, movement. Uh, they are active on their Wikipedia, but they are not active in the Wikimedia movement. So this was the first move from their group to, to have like this kind of uh, meeting. So we funded that, and uh, they uh, they uh, had like a really positive reaction about that. Uh, also, it can be a photo shoot, uh, photo walks, or uh, anything uh, related to, to some of the Wikimedia activities. It is uh, explained on uh, Meta like in uh, like in a large uh, part of that. Uh, and uh, we had only uh, like uh, only uh, a thing that uh, we uh, we uh, we proposed this year is to be uh, activities to be in during uh, this 2024 year. So they need to finish until the end of the year. Uh, uh, so that is due to the reporting and everything uh, connected with that. And also we are trying to respond to every uh, request. Uh, during two weeks' time. So processing time from our side, it's uh, two, two weeks' time. And uh, so far, we are uh, covering that part. Like, we don't have any uh, uh, like, uh, 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 like, uh, delays that, uh, about this. How much? Uh, it's uh, this program uh, I didn't mention so far. So we are funding uh, proposals from 50 to 500 uh, euros. So that is uh, that's why it's called uh, microgrants. It's a very uh, small amount. It's not like uh, rapid funds until up to 5,000 uh, euros or uh, uh, American dollars. So it's only 500 euros. But for the individuals and our own organized groups, these uh, uh, funds are quite enough. So uh, application form uh, is accessible on Meta, and we decided not to be in a wiki, like uh, to, to create on wiki page. But I created afterwards the wiki page on Meta. Uh, but the application is Google form. Uh, because we want it to be open even for the uh, people who don't have so many or so good wiki skills, especially on Meta. So that's why we, we mentioned, uh, we, we, uh, we, uh, uh, we decided to go with the Google form. Uh, evaluation is done by us, me and Barbara. Like uh, we, are, uh, we are scoring and evaluate uh, the, the proposals. Uh, if the applicant uh, doesn't agree with the, with the, our evaluation, uh, they can uh, appeal or like they can submit uh, like uh, uh, afterwards like uh, 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 like appeal to the steering, our steering committee members. Uh, that is uh, ten uh, members. That is uh, like uh, above us like uh, board members, so they, they can uh, then re-evaluate our, uh, our assessment to that proposal. And so far, we received uh, eight uh, proposals from uh, various uh, communities, uh, and uh, six of them are funded so far. The two, the two of them are like, uh, we are unsuccessful, and they, we are withdrawn afterwards. And uh, we can proudly say that uh, five of them like, are from different communities that they are not supported by the uh, Wikimedia Foundation so far like with the grants. So it proves that this program uh, uh, makes sense to have it in our budget, to have it as a C hub, uh, because we are supporting small communities they, they, that uh, they cannot or they don't uh, receive any support so far by the Wikimedia Foundation. That, that's it about microgrants. Afterwards, we, we will have like a, a space for question. I just wanted to add one thing. Uh, Tony nicely pointed out how processing time is two weeks. And um, well, uh, just as a context, this is obviously not the only thing that we are doing, but it's not only about us or Tony and me taking time to review. 
It's um, our hub is not registered entity. We function via our fiscal sponsor. So also this approval is also depending on the fiscal sponsor because they have to uh, prepare a contract and which has to be signed by several people. And then, I mean, this may, may sound like something which can be done in a day, but sometimes even like this small step can take like two, three days. So it's not something to underestimate. Um, okay, thank you, Tony. Uh, we are moving with capacity building program and uh, Yes, capacity building program was something that uh, during the first year of implementation of our CHA uh, project, we noticed how these three pillars that I mentioned when I started the uh, presentation, how they are not enough if we want to cover communities that are smaller and less organized. And when I say smaller and less organized, it's something that was already mentioned, those who don't receive funds, which don't have regular meetings, and um, where, where there is capacity, but not in a structured way. And um, the most important thing was then we realized how it would be good to provide more concrete well, support, and this support would then be in the form of new employees, because Tony and I are covering the whole region, and we can't focus on only one specific country. And also, as I come from Croatia, and he comes from Macedonia, we speak only several local languages. And those communities that we wanted to, or we thought that we would focus on, we, well, we, don't, we can't reach those communities there. So the first step to see which communities, because we cover more than, more than 30 in the C region, would be, uh, would be supported, was to do a research. This research was done by an external consultant. Um, and this research, uh, I mean, implementation of the research and research took place uh, during the previous year. And uh, we wanted to know, the research is also on our meta, uh, the results of the research, but we, through the research we wanted to fi find out uh, which are the obstacles that small, unorganized communities face, and why is not that all uh, communities from CE already have affiliates or functioning communities. We wanted to see like what are these barriers. So through this research, it was shown what are some of the barriers and also what the research showed that there are different uh, stages of development. So obviously, if you're already a chapter or user group, you are at this highest stage of development. But even with small communities that have, can be from two to uh, 20, 30, 50 members, you can be a group which is all composed of several people, but they're not really cooperating. And you can be a group of three people who have regular meetings or you ha can be a group of five who doesn't have that. So we wanted to see which are those stages, and then based on the outcome of research, uh, it was clear that uh, support that we could give, this really specific support, would not really be for everyone. Because coming to some community, and I will give example of my home country, Croatia, where there is no community or only individuals editing, coming to them and saying, oh yeah, we will give you now one employee, and this person will support you, because this is like um, time-based uh, support that we can provide, because foundation agreed that it would be like covered, that they would cover it for one year. This wouldn't make sense because this person couldn't do much in a year. So the first prerequisite, prerequisite was that this community already has ties, that we know that these people are capable and able to do something, and they are actually willing to receive this support. Because one thing is being able to give it, but other other way of the other part of the story is also being able to receive the support. So based on the research, there were several uh, communities suggested, um, not really in a clear way, but it was more, okay, researchers said these, let's say, seven, eight could be good candidates from the region, and then we had to take the second biggest step for us, and that was deciding, well, who would be those communities, to whom to give the support. Uh, it was not a decision made by Tony and me, because we are staff members, we have steering committee composed out of 10, uh, we formed a working group, which was focused on capacity building, and then this working group, based on our input and research, was deciding. And the decision was made how Romania, Moldova, that, that is one user group, and Greece, which is one, and Cyprus would be, th let's say, three communities that we are supporting in this year. And that was when the process started. Um, our idea, initial, when writing project proposal, was that we will actually uh, only give this support to one community. But uh, as it was decided by the working group how it would be 
but how we would try actually to do this with two, and then it ended up with these, uh, we realized how we will not have one extra employee or a contractor, but how we will have to have selection processes for several people. Um, well, some of these people are in the crowd now who were uh, hired, and I will uh, later point them out. But uh, this procedure then, then that started was that we, with the hub, had to also approach Romanian Moldovan group and also uh, Cyprus and Greece and ask them, do you want this support? It was also not from one day to the other. They said, like, oh, yes, yeah, great. It took them a few days because they had to consult with their members and see, is, is this possible? Because even from their end, they knew from the beginning how this would also require a lot of effort. Um, and when they got back to us, they said yes. And then another exciting thing happens. They come back to us and they say, uh, OK, yes, we want this. We appreciate hub support. But we don't want one person. We want two roles. And OK, we had one budget. So this means, OK, it's again splitting. But hub is here not to dictate or to even recommend to communities, oh, yeah, do this and this, because this will lead you somewhere. We are here to support and listen. And this was just the way how the process went. So we heard what they want. Uh, in Romania, they wanted to focus on uh, communication. Oh, OK, so it's already results. So in, in Romania, they wanted to focus on, uh, on, on two areas. One was education, one was communication. And in Cypr and Cyprus and Greece, because it's also covered by one language, so they wanted two people together, one for coordination administration and one for strategy grant, grant support. Um, so basically, the, this HR um, process had to be also constructed from scratch. That meant that we had to draft job descriptions. These job descriptions had to be published. And that it went on like every regular HR process that you have. Some people, several people applied. We organized interviews. But this was all done in cooperation and like basically with everyday cooperation and communication with these communities that we were supporting. Uh, well, the end of the process is that we have four people that were hired. Uh, now I would like to ask them to stand up. We have Sazish from Cyprus. Um, she's here. We have Sofia from Greece. And we have Mag Magda from uh, Romania. Um, and it's really nice to see that, uh, well, something concrete, very concrete. Thank you. Thank you, girls, ladies. It's really nice to see that something really concrete is happening. So they started, um, they started their work recently. Um, let's say two, one month ago. And now uh, the second part of the process is also drafting the plan for the next eight months. This is, it means covering and drafting this plan also again in cooperation with their uh, communities. What are exactly their tasks? What has to be done? Uh, what are the goals? What are the outcomes? And um, these people are covering communities, but they're actually contractors or staff members of the C-Hub. So they are Tony's and my colleagues. And um, yeah, we will see how it goes. Uh, but we are really excited about this. And now you can like ask us about everything like connected with this, especially with these two programs. But also, but also if more. You, yeah, also more. <laughs> yes. So, um, what's your um, plan for this capacity building? You um, plan that when the contract of these contractors has ended. Uh, this kind of stuff uh, will be handed by volunteers of the community? It's a good question. Um, so the, the plan or the idea or the hope is that when their contract finishes, that also by working and providing the support, they will be able to support their community affiliate to draft and to apply for general support fund, and also to include them then as a staff members, be it part-time or full-time. It definitely depends on the outcomes of the work and also cooperation with their community. But the plan is to continue. Um, they wouldn't continue as part of the hub, but then as a part of their, uh, their, their own affiliates. Okay. Uh, and that's why we choose, uh, like, uh, not me uh, and Barbara, but uh, like steering committee choose these uh, two communities. Because the uh, Romanian Moldova and Greek and uh, Cypriot communities are some communities that Barbara already mentioned that has potential to bring it on the next level. Uh, not to say that others don't have it, yep. but it's like we really had limited time, one time. If it would be about two years, three, I see at least two, two three more that we could support. Mm. But uh, we are also two staff members and um, yeah, resources are limited. 
Oh, so I have a clarif clarifying question. Um, when you presented the micro grant, I saw affiliate. W was that correct? That affiliates could also apply? Yeah. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask, what's the reasoning behind it? Because a lot of these affiliates are supported anyways these days through um, annual grants. So under what circumstance do you think they would need to come for a, a, a micro grant? Yep. Uh, that, that is the, the example of the Slovenia. Like that are like uh, in terms of uh, affiliates, like they, they are affiliate because they're a recognized user group without legal entity. They don't have any activities in their communities, as uh, as I mentioned in Wikimedia movement. So they're unorganized in that terms, but they're very active community. They had like uh, during that occasion that uh, we funded. Uh, they had a meeting during the, in the museum, and they gather uh, around uh, 14, 15 people. So that's a quite good number for Slovenian uh, Slovenian community, and that's why we chose it because we we in our C region we have more like that, like affiliates that don't have any grants. Oh yeah. Sorry, and and then my second question is okay. if you. So to both of you, if you have any advice to give to up and coming affiliate um, hubs, what would that single advice be? Oh, <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know if we can answer in uh, one sentence, <laughs> but uh, during Friday, uh, on Friday, uh, we have like uh, how to build uh, the hub uh, from staff perspective. And it will be like session. whole session dedicated to that, so we can offer much more ideas uh, for the upcoming hubs uh, from uh, during that session. So please find it on the event uh, and uh, be there. And my brief remark to this is, and based on this one and a half year of observation, it's really not up to one or two people. It takes, I would say. 10, five to 10 active people. And uh, of course, this level of activity can't be always the same. Sometimes, some people, sometimes you have more time, some less, but it's really the first, first step is to gather this group of enthusiasts who are willing to cooperate and work together and to establish then like really regular calls or meetings. And this is what our group several years, even before the hub, like before all these grants, they started with Wednesday meetings like four or five years ago. They're always happening at 6 p.m. to 7. Um, yeah. And it's already fifth year that we have this Wednesday 6 o'clock meeting. Yeah. So that's our, that's our prime time that everyone who wants to join and listen and comment gathers. So I think that these regular conversations and coming together are very crucial to then kind of bond people, bring them together, several in-person meetings, and then getting it started. And then later also finances, obviously. Yeah. Sure, I think you've actually answered me because my question was around the community, community consultations. Uh, I heard you that you hired an external service provider and you made the research. So I wanted clarity around that research. How did you find out the community needs and how did you consult the, the community before you became a hub? Because I think that is very, very crucial so that people don't feel they are left out. And once people feel that they are left out, that hub is not going to function well, really. Uh, I, I can offer you some uh, some uh, some answer of that because, like, uh, before I started to be employed in the C hub, like uh, uh, last year in February, I was employed uh, in the C hub. But before that, I'm a volunteer in the Wikimedia movement from 2010, and uh, as part of the C research. Uh, that uh, C hub or that group, uh, not not even even in that time that was not called C hub, uh, but that group uh, 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 like started to have like a research grant about needs of the C movement, uh, C communities. So as part of that, uh, as an editor, like uh, active editor in Macedonian community, they made uh, an interview with me. Uh, so they dedicate, I think. Uh, uh, a lot of time like to speak with the regular editors or what they need like uh, and they they covered a lot of like uh, time to to speak with uh, every like from every community like active people 
uh, so it was an extensive uh, like uh, period uh, like uh, which they 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 like uh, bring uh, like inputs from uh, from the committees. I also think it was a mix of two things. One was one was these detailed interviews, and then they really took their time during this research. And this research was not also. This research that I mentioned was done by external consultant, but this first research was done by volunteers and supported by Wikimedia Poland. Mm. This one yeah. before formation of the hub. And um, Wikimedia Poland actually um, really, well, gave, uh, gave a lot of their resources for this to be done. So I think that this was a combination of approaching everyone, but also making sure that everyone who shows an interest in hub, continuing to work on hub construction or hub making, is able to join these meetings, get on board, and be heard, basically. So it was not like, oh, I come to you, interview you, and, well, we are some small group working behind on this, but also, okay, we are interviewing you, but also, if you are, if you are interested in the process, if you want to be part of hub making, please join us. Um, so I think that was a combination. Hi. Now you provide like full-time roles for communities, uh, for organizations. But uh, do you think about like uh, smaller communities probably use can use some partial time uh, employers? But probably you, you can have somebody who work on a, like f full-time job, but provide resources uh, partially for each community. Something that can be uh, scaled, like I don't know, some translation organ uh, organization. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. S some things that could be scaled between uh, yep, communities. Between various communities. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I mean, do, do do you still uh, do do you think that uh, full role for one community is more valuable than s somebody who works for everybody? Uh, or yeah, uh, we, we will see at the end of this year. We will see. It, it is. It will be a nice result to, to have it. At the end, but uh, that was uh, one of the approach that we discussed it before. So we will see <laughs> to who, who, what is better. Yeah, we will see this how this approach with having part-time employees in and then supporting uh, several smaller communities how it worked. So based on that, we will be able to well see what the following approach or follow-up should be. But also, don't forget that we also largely depend, both Tony and me, and uh, well, all, all the others now employed on Wikimedia Foundation, because we are receiving yearly grants. So basically, we, our first year then was covered, um, for to I was covered for a year, Tony even less, because he joined a bit la later, and now we are again employed for a year. So basically, we also, as a hub, apply for our grant somewhere in autumn, and then late autumn, winter, we get to hear do we even get money for the third year? So it's a, uh, well, it's like, it's a process. Yeah, because the, the hubs itself is, is still not regulated by the, the Wikimedia movement, so it is still unexplored territory. <laughs> Andre? Hey, I just want to try my own answer to this question uh, as a beneficiary for of, of such an employee. So um, there are two things to be considered as as an affiliate in the region. Uh, one is uh, can an employee be useful without speaking the language? And the answer uh, is yes for some stuff, usually when you are within the movement. But it quickly becomes no when you move outside the movement, right? If you want to do outreach, depending on who you outreach to, it, it might work to work in English, but most often not. Uh, you need local knowledge. Uh, the second part you should consider is how much time do you really need? Um, because if you have, like, why do you, did we ask for two people instead of one? Uh, simply put, we didn't need somebody for the period of time that would be covered by the whole budget, you know? Uh, but we would have used two people for less, just because our activities are not large enough to cover all this time. So you need to know your activities, you need to know your needs, and then ask for the support that the hub can give you. And it will be either through the their stuff or through somebody else, if they can. 
Hey, thank you, Andre. This was great. And I, I think it's also important to realize that what worked for Romania, what Andre was now explaining, or for Cyprus, Greece, doesn't apply to everyone. Obviously, each community has to see which roles at this stage of development would be the best fit for them. It's, it's not one size fit all. Okay, I, can, I think we can finish then. Our Sofia. Hello, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to add an advice. It's for my poor experience, so I don't know if you agree, but it's for smaller communities. Uh, I think you should consider doing only one thing uh, at a time, because if you overload your community, uh, it will be really hard for you to, to do something and to be well done. And you may uh, end up doing uh, nothing. That's all. I think this is, in general, a really good advice. We also often in, in Hub also, because there are many enthusiastic people, tend to do like, oh, yeah, it's great. Let's, let's do everything, uh, 10 things at a time. We are pioneering, trying. But at some point, it's also good to say no. OK, now we are focusing on this. And then once we are done, let's continue. Uh, the, it's the point of the whole story is not to be uh, burned out in the end and not be able to continue. It's like uh, not. Uh, you're not speeding like 200 meters, it's like a few kilometers you have to, or even more. Or like Tony, 1,200 <laughs> from Skopje, by bike. Okay, one last, uh, I don't want to call it a question, but maybe clarification from me. Overlapping roles. You are saying you have 30 communi communities, right, that are subscribed to the uh, hub. 30. More than 30, right? How do you manage the overlapping roles? Um, say maybe a user group is already doing some work and someone from that user group cannot come and say maybe to you, I'm asking, because they were denied funding there in the user group. They come to you and say, can I, can I please get funding from, for the same thing? How do you manage that? Yeah. Uh, it, it, it is a nice question, yeah, yes, uh, but uh, we are trying to, to, to get an answer from the applicant and from the affiliate in the same moment. So uh, like we'll tr to try to see what the, the both sides of the, the story or the, like, uh, what, what is their answers. So, so far we had only uh, that kind of request, uh, just one from Georgia. And that is only one experience, but we are looking forward to see other like uh, applicants for another like uh, affiliates to see these kind of. And it is like something that I'm looking forward to see how it will uh, be happening like in the in in this year. Uh, yeah, the other the other thing worth mentioning is also that we um, okay Tony and I are not uh, like some kind of inspectors or task force yet. But um, uh, what we have to always check is the double financing. Um, so what has to be done once someone applies, even if it's micro grant, we have to always check because money is given by Wikimedia Foundation, but through us, this, this is basically called regranting. We always have to check with program officers, this, does this applicant, is this applicant already receiving funds for this same activity? So it's like basically only one, two day check with foundation and we didn't have any problems, but this is something that we also have to like do as a first uh, check. Okay, so I have two questions. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No. I'm trying to learn as much as I can. <laughs> so. Just one minute in council. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. So my first question is, what is your con consensus driven process? I know the the movement in CE has given you a lot of trust. They've bestowed a lot of trust in you. But how do you ensure that that trust reflects in the decisions that you make? So your consensus driven process. And then two, you said you have more than 30 affiliates. Do you see a future where applications are coming all over CE? And how sustainable would that be for you now in your current condition? Yep, uh, we're still trying quick, although we're just two of us, like we're trying to have like regular contacts with every community, at least two times per year, uh, with online, like video calls, but also with, we had like uh, meetings, yeah, but also we had like a regular like communication with other channels, like emails, uh, messages and like that. But 
it will be a good to see like if they all of them like apply that all of uh, that all at the time we speak a lot about that when we are deciding about microgrants uh, with our steering committee members. It is hypothetical and we will see. So far it's not like that. We are not all like overburdened with the applicants. Yeah, maybe, maybe just to add uh, this consensus driven. Um, well, uh, apart from these bi-weekly meetings that can be attended by a really large group of people and these regular meetings that we have, we have Telegram channel with the with the region. We have once we write a grant application, we contact affiliates or communities also to comment. We ask them to comment on the grant. Do they want something else to be covered? Then during our regional CE Central Eastern European meeting, we also organize sessions that everyone can comment on this grant. So it's not that Tony and I just write grant and we steering committee just signs off. It's like this process really takes uh, writing writing first version is the smallest part, but these consultations then take like few months before it's like, okay, it's okay in this form for the region. That's how it was done last year, and it's how it, it will be done this year as well. Thanks a lot. We are, past we are also the here, time. so you yeah. can always ask us. We are us. here, you can find us, like, yeah. Hey, we are here unless we are not here. <laughs> yeah.